Now we have items added to our basket or our cart or whatever we want to call it. What we now need to do is actually create the cart page where we're actually going to see a list of what we have in our cart. And this is pretty straightforward. But what we're also going to focus on is syncing up based on changes in the database. So for example, if we uh, change a quantity over in the data or a stock in the database, and it's lower than the amount the user has in their car, what we want to do is update that. So obviously, if someone else checks out and reduces the stock level, we want to reflect that on our cart page. And that isn't difficult at all. We'll see how easy that is in a moment. So we'll start by creating our uh, view for this. In fact, we already have our view for this. So let's just head over to cart index and get rid of this dump. We know that items being added properly and we can now start to actually output uh, our cart page. So inside of here then we want to extend our base template. So let's say extends templates app.twig and then down here we will set up our content area. So this is a block remember and we're calling this content and we'll just end our block down there. So inside of here we're going to have a row as usual and we're actually going to have two columns here. So we're going to have an eight column and we're going to have a four column. This is going to be the kind of summary uh, with the checkout button. So we'll just write this in here for now so we don't forget. And in this column, we're going to have just the list of items. Now we only want to show our basket if we actually have items. So the first thing that we can do here is an if statement to say, well, if the basket has items, so we can just use the item count method for that, then we want to show our basket. So this will just be a list of items, so list. So if we head over to this now, and uh, ooh, we've got a little problem here, so this should be end if, not end block. There we go. So we now have a list. We obviously have items in our cart, we have two, and over here will be the summary. So we can start to output these items now. This is relatively straightforward. So we're going to create a well for this. Uh, this is just bootstrap styling, so it looks like that. And then inside of this, we are going to have a table. And this will have a class of table. Again, this is just bootstrap styling. So for the head of this, then, we want to include the product, the price, and the quantity. So let's just create our head cells. So product, price, and quantity we know we have all this information available and down here for the body of this we want to loop through all of the items so we can start by doing a for item in basket dot all we know that our all method gives us a collection of uh, products we can end the for there and inside of here we're obviously going to have a row and then we're going to have here a product or the product the price, and then the quantity. So for the product, we will make this an anchor because obviously we can link through to the product. So we'll just say here, product.title. And then for the anchor, we know that we already have the product index page set up. So we can just say product.get. And here, remember, we pass through the slug. So we just say slug and we say item.slug. And of course, this here should be item.title. So we now have the following. Looks good considering we've not done too much work here already. So we have these products, we can click through onto them, add more if we want, uh, but we'll get later on to actually updating the quantity from here. So for the second one then, it is the price. So to do this, we only have one currency now. We're not gonna dive into multiple currencies, but here we just say item price, and then here we can use number format with uh, two to give us uh, the formatted date with, or the formatted price with two decimal points. And that's pretty much it. So for the quantity then, if we just come down to this one, this is going to be slightly different. We're gonna cover this in the next part because it will take a little bit more work in terms of the form. So for now, let's just put a hyphen there. Uh, we can always up, uh, output the item quantity just temporarily, I guess. Let's just put temp here so we remember. And all we do remember is we say item.quantity. And if you're wondering again where this comes from, remember that when we do actually grab all of our items from here, we actually 
set this quantity specifically when we loop through all the products we have. So that comes directly uh, from there and it's just attached to the model. So here we can see one and two. Now the reason I put temp is because this is eventually going to be a drop down with a quantity that's selected. We can uh, update the drop down, click update and we're done. So that is pretty much it. What we're also going to do here is add an else. So we're going to say else and we're just going to have a little message. So you have no items in your cart. And why don't we put an anchor here just to say start shopping. And this will just link through to the home page because that's where all of our items are listed. Now that we have our list of items in here, we want to include on this side a summary with the total uh, price and uh, some other information as well. So here we can again have a little if statement to say basket dot item count and basket dot subtotal. Now the reason we're doing that is because technically we can have items in our cart but no quantities. Now that's only going to happen if the um, if someone else checks out, let's say we add an item and then someone else while we're browsing the site checks out, the quantity is reduced. We're actually going to keep the item in there, but we're going to just show it as kind of out of stock now. So uh, that's why we're doing checking the subtotal. We want there to be some kind of money involved before we start to allow anyone to check out. So again, we're going to have a well just in here and here we can just say cart summary. Now down here, we're just going to put an HR, it really doesn't matter in terms of design, and we're going to require in a summary there. And then down here, we're going to have a checkout button. So let's just add this checkout button now. We've not got to this point yet, uh, so we can just put a hash in there, and we will add a class to this as well. So we'll say button, button, default, and it currently looks like this. Well, it doesn't because we don't actually have our subtotal method added just yet. So why don't we do this now over in basket? It's not too much trouble. So let's create this now. So we have a subtotal method. And all we want to do here is set a default total. And then down here, we want to go through each of our items. So this will be our items from the database. So we just say this all as item. Now, when don't we want to add this as a subtotal? Well, when it's out of stock. So within this loop, if the current item is out of stock, we just want to continue through and we don't want to add up that value. And then outside of this, inside of the loop, we're going to say total equals total plus item price so the actual price of the item multiplied by the quantity of the item that we have in our cart. So that's just basically adding up everything within our cart. And then finally, we just return that total. So now that we've done this, we know that we have a positive uh, monetary value to our cart. So now this shows up. So now what we want to do is just in here, include the actual summary of the items. And then we're pretty much done with our cart view. So over in our cart index here, we want to require in a summary. So as part of cart, let's just create a new folder called partials and we can use this elsewhere then. It means that we can uh, include it anywhere we need. So let's create a summary.twig file. And inside of here will just be the summary. This again is gonna be a table. We can give this a class of table. And in here, we're going to have a row. This is going to have a sub total here. And it's also then going to have the subtotal of the basket. Remember, we have basket everywhere now. So we can just use the sub total method. And of course, we want to do a number format on that for two decimal places. Now down here for the second row, we want the shipping rate. So in here, we also have a cell. And we're going to be hard coding the shipping rate throughout this. But of course, you can easily update that later on just by, you know, allowing a user to select it. And here we're going to have a total. So we'll give this a class of success, I guess. That will just make it look a little bit nicer. 
and we have an overall total of the cart. So for this one then, let's add that as a success as well. And we're just going to output the basket subtotal. We're gonna add five to it, so that's the shipping rate. So again, if you uh, dynamically include the shipping rate, you can add that in there. And then we're going to number format this as well with two decimal places. So let's include this in and see how it looks. So in here, we just need to do an include on cart partials summary.twig and we now have the following. So we have a subtotal, which is the items that we actually have in here. So two of these and then one of these. Then we have the shipping and then the total value. So that is our cart index. The more items we add to this, the better it's going to be. We're going to have uh, kind of fill this up. So let's add some of these. So let's add this. There we go. And let's go ahead and add another one. There we go. So we're just incrementing this as we go. And uh, what's actually happening here is we're getting an exception because we've added the maximum stock for this item. Now we're gonna be preventing this, but this should not happen because we did catch that exception. So what we can do is go back and check that this is all working. So if we head over to our cart controller and go down here, we should be catching this exception here. So quantity exceeded exception. The reason that that's not being caught is we haven't imported it just up here. So we can grab this from basket. We can go over to our cart controller and paste this in. And now when we go and try and add one, so let's go and try and add another one, you can see that we've caught that exception, but remember what we're not doing is actually doing anything with it. So here's the opportunity to add some kind of flash message, but really your users should never get to the point where they're actually adding more than they should because we're gonna be kind of protecting that within the form. We're not gonna to allow to add more quantity. Okay, so now that we have our cart summary, and our actual list of items, we need to make sure that when, for example, I change this, so if we just pull this down for a little bit, uh, we have a Bolivia here, we can go and reduce the stock to zero. What happens is nothing. The only thing that happens is we update our subtotal because we're not including items that aren't in stock. So just to end this part, we want to make sure that when this does change, we want to sync this up to remove items that no longer exist in quantity. So I guess what we can do is to test this out, set a fairly large quantity, let's say stock of five, and let's just add a few more of these. Obviously we have to manually do this now because uh, we don't have the ability to update yet. We now have five of these items in here. So when I reduce this to say four, what we want to do is reduce this to four. When we want to, or when we reduce this to zero, we don't want to get rid of it. We want to keep it in here, but we want to set the quantity to zero and then uh, maybe get rid of all of this stuff here. So the user knows that it's still out of stock. So to do this then, we need to return back to our basket. And down here, we're going to implement a method that will kind of sync this up. So we want to, well, you can call this whatever you want, but I'm going to call it refresh. And inside of here, we want to go through each of our items. So we're gonna say this all as item. Now, the first thing we want to do is check if the item doesn't have any stock. So we're gonna say item doesn't have stock. I'm gonna pass in that item quantity. So if it doesn't have the stock based on the quantity we already have, what do we need to do? Well, we need to call our update method, which if I can find it is here, to actually update the quantity. So in here, we just say this update the item and we update it to the maximum stock available for that item. And now what we can do is if the item has a stock of one, and the quantity is zero. Now what this means is that if, for example, we put an item back in stock, what we do is we uh, check if it has at least one stock, so we just say one, and then if the quantity is currently set to zero, so if it's been previously removed, we want to update it and add stock in. So we always want to add stock back in if that's the case. So we're gonna say item one. So we just update it with uh, a single item. 
So now what we can do then is making sure that this is set to five still, we just see five. Now, if we change this to four, you can see, oh, of course we haven't called the method. So let's go and just return that stock to five. And uh, remember it's called refresh. So basically anywhere that the user kind of lands to start the checkout process, e.g. in the cart, so over on the index, what we want to do is say this basket refresh like so so we don't need to call it everywhere we just need to call it kind of on our cart and our order form so at the moment nothing's happening but if we change our stock to four and just bring up our uh, page here and we go and refresh the page you can see that that's reduced to four and again if we reduce it to two it goes down to two and if we were to reduce it to one again we get back one if there were to be no stock what we do is we reduce this and it goes from here, which I guess is fine actually. Okay, let's leave it at this. We can update this later if we want, but either way we now have that. Now, if I return this back to stock five, let's say that that was previously removed and I refresh, then it doesn't come back. Let's just check if this is still in our um, session. And to do this, we can just go and again, like we did before, we just did basket all and we did a JSON in code here so let's just change this over and there we go so it looks like we don't actually have that in there okay let's leave it at that because I think that's not too much of a deal at least we're getting rid of it that's the main point and what we can actually do is just to simplify this is get rid of this here as well and all this will do is and we can try it out with another item so let's say uh, we have Blake espresso over here let's say we just reduce this down to one in stock that will reduce that down to one and then if we reduce this to zero it will get rid of it and then i guess if we increase the stock that's fine we don't need to really need to add it back in but either way the most important thing is that we don't allow a user to check out if the stock is um you know above what we actually have or their quantity is above what we have so we'll leave it at that we'll come back to it later if we think it would be a good idea to update this it makes sense but of course you can go ahead and do that if you want as well so there we go. We have created our cart summary and we've updated uh, this to sync with the items that we actually have in stock just to make sure we are not allowing users to check out with items that are currently not in stock. So thanks to Braintree Payments for supporting CoCourse. Mobile development can be really complex, but integrating your payments doesn't have to be. With Braintree, your business will have simple, secure payments that you can integrate in minutes with just 10 lines of in-app code. Braintree's simple, flexible SDKs, elegant code, and clear documentation make your job and payments easier. Learn more at braintreepayments.com slash codecourse.